everybody and welcome to Storm Reads and today I'm going to talk about the books that I've read this week. I am only going to talk about three out of the five books that I've, I've read this week because I'm going to do a separate uh, wrap up for the uh, Categorically Romanced Readathon. And so I only, I read some books for that and then I read Three Cozy Mysteries or I listened to them on audio. And so I thought I would talk about them and then talk about some of the books that I am currently reading. So hopefully you can't hear the air conditioner in the background. It's really hot. I probably look like I'm gleaming because I'm sweaty and it's kind of nasty. I do like warmer weather than colder weather, but yeah, it can get pretty hot. And so hopefully I don't look like too much of a mess. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's get, get on with the books. So I um, read... I re-listened to a book called Yarn to Go by Betty Heckman. It's number one in the Yarn Retreat series. And I reread this because the Co Killing Time with Cozy's book club was doing a knockout challenge in June and we were doing uh, two different craft books and we were pitting them against each other. I read one of them last week and then so I needed to finish this one. I had, Since I would previously read it and it had been a long time ago, I didn't think I could honestly remember what happened good enough to decide which of the books I liked best without re-listening to it. So I went ahead and did that. And it's about uh, Casey who is a dessert baker and she works for the Blue Door which is a restaurant in her town and she kind of moonlights a little bit with baking muffins for some of the coffee shops and her friend Lucinda who uh, is co-owner with her husband Tag doesn't mind that she uses her the baking facility to do that as long as she makes sure they have plenty of desserts and everything for their restaurant. And then one day Tag comes up to her and was wanting to know what this uh, yarn to go thing was. He had an invoice for, which Casey had no idea what it was about. And it comes to find out that her aunt, who had just passed on about three months ago, uh, ran a yarn retreat and she had scheduled a yarn retreat that was gonna be in a couple of weeks. And it's it was too late to put out refunds. So in her aunt's honor, she decides to go ahead and um, go ahead and do the, re the retreat. And um, so she does, does that and we get some pretty interesting characters. And then one of the ladies at the retreat ends up dead. And so Casey, of course, decides to try to figure out what happened since it happened to uh, one of her people on her watch. She kind of feels like she should investigate and, and figure out what's going on. And it was enjoyable. I really liked it. I gave it four stars, and I'm pretty sure that's probably what I gave it uh, when I first listened to it. I have listened to, uh, I think, four or five in this series, so it's an enjoyable series. So I knew that I would enjoy listening to the first one over again. And then the next book is A Monk Goes to the Firehouse by Lee Goldberg, and this is the first book in the Mr. Monk series. It's the series that I think the TV show was based on. It's either the TV show came first and then the books, or the book, you know how that goes, I'm not quite sure. But it was about uh, Mr. Monk, who is um, a guy with OCD. He used to be a policeman, but now he's a police consultant. And he has a lady, Natalie Teeger, who uh, kind of helps him in his day-to-day -day life. And he has termites in his house, and, you know, he cannot handle that. And so he has to have... The termites um, eradicated, so he needs a place to stay. Well, none of the hotels were good enough for Mr. Monk, and so she ends up inviting him, Natalie does, to stay at her house, and she's not sure if she's going to regret this or not, but while they're there, they find out that um, the firehouse dog has been murdered, and uh, Julie, her daughter, who is like 12, is really upset about it. And so Monk decides he's going to find out what happened to the dog. And in doing so, ends up solving like three other crimes that have something to do with the fire, the fire dog and everything. It was all connected. Of course, you know, Mr. Monk's good at spotting that kind of thing and everything. So yeah, it was pretty interesting. It was kind of funny. I was afraid it might be a little too over the top with his OCD because I know sometimes it can be in the show, but you know, it was kind of funny and I know a mental health disorder isn't anything to laugh about, but they do do it and I don't think they're doing it to be, you know, bad or anything, it, but it's kind of just, it's just kind of makes you chuckle a little bit and have, have a good time. It also, 
I think it gave Mr. Monk a little bit more heart in the, the book series than it does the TV series. Because in this one, there are several moments where you actually kind of feel a little bit sorry for Monk in his condition. Um, he's a very lonely man. He, you know, because of his condition, it kind of puts people off. And so he was, even though he was complaining about staying at Natalie's house, he actually enjoyed staying at Natalie's house because Natalie and Julie were there. And so, you know, it kind of gives him a little bit heart. And I like that part. And I give it three stars because it was pretty enjoyable. And this was for the actual book club pick for the Killing Time with Cozies. Because every month we have an actual book and then they were doing this other thing. The knockout was something separate. But yeah, it was good. Three stars. And then the last book that I read, which was another cozy mystery, and it was Premeditated Peppermint. And this was number three in the Amish candy shop mysteries and it's by Amanda Flowers and I've really enjoyed this series so far you know it is only the third one there are a few things that I don't like but there are a lot of things that I do like so it's, it's very enjoyable it's about uh, Bailey and she's working with her grandmother it's during Christmas time in harvest and so they're making lots and lots of peppermint and in the middle of them working at her shop her ex Eric comes in with a whole TV crew and doesn't even give any warning to anything. They're just there. Well, you know, the Amish, they, they frown upon that kind of thing. They don't want to be on TV or anything like that. So Bailey's really worried about uh, what her grandma's going to think about this, wants him to get out of there and everything, and find out that he's wanting to do, he's got his own show now, and he's wanting to do a show about the Amish shop and about Bailey who's working there and everything and wanting it to be kind of them getting back together of course but Bailey doesn't see it that way but uh, yeah so then the I think it's the executive producer it's somebody high up somebody that's taking charge of the show ends up murdered and so she's got to figure out you know what exactly is happening even though Aiden doesn't want her involved in things she gets involved in it anyway and the things that I don't like was Cassie's friend. Usually I enjoy Cassie's friend. I mean, she's very outgoing, got blue hair, all these things. A lot of, uh, gives the Amish people something to look at. <laughs> and she's a lot of fun, but in this one I thought she was just a little annoying, a little pushy. She was uh, pretending to be Bailey's manager with this whole show thing and trying to get, you know, more money, more of this, more of that. Uh, Juliet was wanting Jethro on TV and Jethro is her pig so they were working it into where they could get Jethro in there and she was just really 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 annoying and just aggravated me a little bit and normally I like her and I still like her as a character but she was just a little annoying in this one and Juliet she's Aiden's mother and she has put Aiden and Bailey together since book one she thinks they'll make this the best couple well, she keeps throwing, trying to push them together and always referring to her as future daughter-in-law and all these things. And, you know, I think it's, it makes Bailey and Aiden kind of not want to get together. I'm like, she's being a little too pushy. They do like each other, but they haven't even been on a date yet. And she's already got them shipped and married. And so that kind of gets annoying every now and then. But I do like Juliet. Juliet's a fun character. It's just that one thing that she does I just wish she would quit doing I mean I understand she really likes Bailey and she thinks that her she would make a good wife for her son but she needs to let them figure that out and quit trying to push them together but overall I still really enjoyed the series I enjoyed the uh, mystery I don't think I figured it out until pretty much this about the same time the uh, main character did so it was pretty good and I gave it four stars because it is an enjoyable series and it was Christmas time you know, I just gotta love my Christmas cozy so that's the three books besides the romances that I read this week and I will do like I said another wrap-up for the romances I read so that I can put all of them the one there wasn't that many but I just thought I would go ahead and just wrap that up separately and so there is a one that I'm reading that's one of the romances I didn't get to I didn't get it finished I just barely got started actually so I want to go ahead and finish this so I will be continuing to read this this week and it's 
The Fourth Letter by Alison Quinn, and it's the Harlequin Gothic Romance. But this is the Harlequin Gothic Romance, and I just barely gotten started. I'm kind of curious to see how it's going to be, because I think I read Gothic Romances a long time ago, but I don't know if I've ever read this. I probably wouldn't even remember if I did, but I'm just kind of curious. It's about a woman who... Uh, her father was pretty much disowned by his mother and he moved to Paris with his family so she's never met her grandmother but how her father her mother has been uh, passed on since he was like two and her father has passed away and now he wants her to take this letter I think to the, her grandmother and so she's gonna be meeting her grandmother for the first time and it's just not gonna be I guess a fun get together and so I'm kind of curious to see how it goes then I am attempting to read Siege and Storm by Lee Bardugo I'm about 25 pages into it and it's kind of slow and boring but it's the second one for the Shadow and Bones and um, I really don't understand the hype around this I don't know if it's just just me and not just not interested in this type of thing but my friend and I are trying to buddy read them and I've got to get this one done this week, so we'll see. <laughs> Hopefully I can get it done. And I'm pretty sure most people know what the Shadow and Bone series is about. It's all over YouTube. And I am also reading Denied by Mary Kiliko, and I'm about 45%, I think, of the, through that one, and it's about Kelly Pruitt, who is a PI, and it's the second book in the Kelly Pruitt series. And in this one, a lady that she knew that she I think went to high school with or something like so she hadn't seen her in a while but they used to be friends has asked her if she can find her father because she is pregnant and she has been estranged from her father for about a year I think it's been a while they haven't talked after her husband and her father got in an argument and they haven't talked since and so she's frantically trying to find him and she can't he's not answering the door she he's not answering the phone and everything and she's wanting to know what happened to him you know where did he go and so Kelly is going to look into that and looking into that she gets a little bit more than she bargained for she thought it was going to be a simple m missing persons but it's not quite as simple as it seemed at first so it's been pretty good I'm enjoying it and so that's what I'm reading right now, not quite sure what's coming up. I haven't quite made up my mind, so we'll see. And so if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next video.